Joyce is a guy, I think he's going to fight for a heavyweight title. They're going to keep him on track. I said it in our last podcast. That's why I don't know why you guys got a little so out of sorts. But And I got to stand up for my man, Ken. Not if he's wrong, but I, I, I do have to stand up for him to maybe better interpret what he was saying from his eyes. And like I said, he wasn't really off. Um, Joyce, I give him credit. I give him maybe more credit in a way that I see him. I see the shortcomings, but I see his strengths. I see there's nobody great out there. And I see his toughness. I see his relentlessness. That's a quality. That's a quality. That's an ability. And that's going to play out. And I see him fitting in there for the world title in the next year, almost, I would say. I see him where I could have saw him fighting Fury, but I think Fury's retired if we take him at his word, and he's going to wind up fighting Ganyu, the UFC champion, for mega money in one of those events, um, if, if they can pull that off. And, and that's what... But I made this point last week. If they and White... Can, and Fury can put almost 100,000 people into Wembley, Joe Joyce could do it. Joe, Why couldn't Joe Joyce do it? So whether Joe Joyce winds up fighting the winner of Usyk and Joshua, and I'll tell you something, I think he knocks out Joshua. How's that feel for you, Brits? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's going to make you happy, huh? That ain't going to make you too happy. I know it. You're going to be hoping that I have to eat crumpets again. I get it. I But... I, I tell you, at this point, yeah, I take them to knock out. Our people are going to go nuts. Now, the people that were mad at us for not giving Joyce enough credit, they're probably going to be happy. But I'm not doing it to make you happy or to make you angry. I'm doing it out of what I feel, what my experience tells me, what my judgment tells me. I can see that. I can see that. I can't see Joe Joyce beating a fury. No, I can't. Because of, like I said, his shortcomings. But... Because of his style and his strengths that he has? Yeah, at this point, I could see him, you know. I mean, he might get his chin checked a little bit, and we have to find out if it stood up against against Joshua who can bang, obviously. But uh yeah. I I could see I could see him take it down Joshua. But of course Joshua might get taken down by Usyk before that. We don't know yet. Uh for the second time in a row. We don't know. But that's what I was going to ask you about with that fight coming up on uh, August 20th. We've discussed it in the past, but anything special you're looking for there? And uh, I, I think I know the answer, but what, what's your expected outcome there? Well, I before I, I even I, say I that, I want to say expected. one thing, and then I'll get to that, Ken. I would love to see a shootout between Joyce before he fights for the title. I don't think they're going to do it because they know what I know. It's dangerous. But I'd love to see a shootout between Joyce and Wilder. You know, we were talking about that uh, Wilder was caught out or that, that, that real tough Chisora, you got to admire him, he'll fight anyone, that he told his promoter, Eddie Hearn, get me Wilder. Well, I would love to see Joyce against Wilder. That would be an earth, earthquake fight. What about Joyce Chisora? Listen, I think Joyce might be a little too young, a little too big, a little too strong. Um, but you know what? As Chisora don't know how to do anything but make wars and make great fights. It would it would be fun. Um, I I think he might come on the short end of it, but then again, he would definitely, as the terminology I used earlier, he would definitely check the chin <laughs> of Mister Joyce before <laughs> the night. You know, check your hat, check your coat, Ken. Check he uh, with Chisora, he checks your chin. Uh, at the door, yep. but make sure you brought it with. Let him. me get to what you <laughs> asked now, which is the question. One of the questions the fans want to hear out there um, about the fight with uh, the second fight with Usyk and Joshua. That's what you just asked me. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a quick hit on that one because we're going to do a whole fight plan on it uh, next Thursday, just, which will be available I already, in anticipation of the August. I talked fight. about it two weeks ago, but I I hit on yeah. it again. I think I think it could go a couple ways. Here's here's the thing. I, I first of all I think Usyk's gonna win. But I this is I can't go against Usyk. How can I go against the guy that 
gives you no reason to go. He was undefeated cruiserweight champ, unified all the titles, the best cruiserweight ever besides Holyfield. Um, he's an Olympic gold medalist. He doesn't know how to lose. Um, and and then he goes and he pulls off the upset against the bigger fighter, just like Holyfield did when he stepped up against Buster Douglas from cruiserweight to heavyweight. He goes and does it. He, he beats Joshua. I... With this, there's an X factor, ten, uh, intangible. With this war, this terrible, terrible war that's going on in the Ukraine with Russia, where Usyk will either be fighting with more of a power, if you will, um, more incentive, more, you know, uh, motivation. Not that he needs more. He's a proud guy. But than ever, representing the hope of the Ukrainians, or he could be influenced the other way where after seeing what he's seen, his town's destroyed, his country being laid into rubble parts of it, people being killed, he might look at it like, you know what? In the scheme of life, boxing's not as important as this, as life. And that could change him a little. I don't know which way. I, I'm going to go with the first way, that he's he's going to fight as as the representative of hope for the Ukrainian people out there that need hope right now. I'm going to go with that. Um, I, His versatility, his mind, uh, I just, I've said it before, and I know a few of the people, again, you're going to have to go to the, uh, to the customer service department and talk to my man if you have some complaints about what I'm about to say. But sometimes I think, and you want to interpret it the wrong way. It's up to you guys. Sometimes I think that Joshua is too good a loser. And and when I say that, do I mean he should curse? Oh, Teddy, you mean he should curse? He act like a fool like this guy did? And, that, and you start pointing all these names out and act like Brona or act like this one or act like that one? And I, no, no, no. Um, no, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. You, um, come on, don't be so... Come on, be a little smarter than that. Uh, what I'm saying is, I know he's a classy guy, and he he doesn't go out there, and I'm not saying I want a sore loser that says the wrong things, but I'm just saying that sometimes it looks like Joshua accepts losing a little too freely, like he did against Ruiz the first time in the garden. Almost like a guy who's made too much money. That it's not quite... And look, do I know how he feels inside and when he's alone? No. No. I can only go by what I can go by. But sometimes I just feel that it's not important enough to him anymore. <laughs> 